all the helps run the podcast stuff for Bishop Chicago. Okay. Bishop, if you're watching, I'm gonna I want to use your studio. I want to make these all in person one day. I just need a nice studio, and I think that maybe the, maybe they don't use it all the time. Maybe I can come up there. I don't know. Yeah. But okay, so how we're we're looking for uh, if all if all these Saints were alive today. We're trying to build a team that would stay in the world. Now, once one's drafted, the guest always goes first. But once one's drafted, you got to take that person off your off your list. So it's kind of just like the normal NBA draft. Once, once they're drafted, they're on that team. So uh, awesome. So you go first, and you can always give like just a tiny brief, like why. We obviously we'll make it relatively quick, but like you give a tiny brief why, like why you would pick that person. Wonderful. Yeah, I saw that um, you and Branson kind of uh, waved off. Um, oh, yeah. our, our lady, our lady, and yeah. Jesus. Which um, yeah. I was thinking of like a, an all time QB scenario where our lady's all time QB. You know, she yeah. she goes to both sides. Yeah. But I guess the other thing would be is you put throw her back in there, but you got to pick like like bitch, maybe like like appearance of marriage. So you could like pick our lady of Guadalupe, yeah. Or you could pick like our lady of Beno or something like that. I don't know, but yeah, yeah. For now, we'll, yeah, she's one of the coaches. Yeah, there Mary, you go. There Mary you go. and Jesus are the coaches. Wonderful. So. I actually, I don't know if he kind of goes by the same standards, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna full send it. And I'm gonna go Saint Joseph, you know. Okay. Just um, we see we need we need a strong fatherly figure to come back yeah. in in today's generation, restore the the traditional family values, this um, extraordinary but ordinary man. And so, yeah, um, yeah Saint Joseph, just a patron of family life. And so, why why not start him off? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I feel like I need rules for myself to make it even. Harder for me because I do this every single time. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll probably. I was also thinking maybe I'll stop and come up with something else to do with the guest tonight. I don't know. We'll see. But because I'm like, I can't pick the same five each week because I want to be like, he's only going to change it with other people. But because it's the first pick and I can't not go him, I'm going to pick a great leader in St. John Paul II. Okay. Go with a good pope. We need a good leader. Just start there. You get the, you get the LeBron James of the team. Uh, mm. Then we'll build around it. Yeah, round, round absolutely. One done. What's your round two? Round two is I'm actually gonna go a similar route, but I'm gonna go with Saint Peter, and I'm gonna um, where I think so many people are kind of you know curious about yeah. you know like uh, maybe some people have certain opinions about the papacy right now. Why not bring back good old Saint Peter to to remind them of the of of who the Rock is? You know. Yeah, I like it. Uh, this one I stole from Steve Hoonswiler because I was like, dang, that's a good one. I don't know why on earth I didn't think that. Uh, but great writer, St. Paul. So we've got, we've got our leader. Now we got the guy that's going to get all the information out there. And, and uh, so we're going to move on to uh, evangelization and family life soon. Love it. Love it. Um, I'm going to go with St. Maximilian Colbe. And just go, the the man who who calls out indifference, and for a culture that is defined by indifference, let's let's bring him back. You know, let's let's have him win some hearts back over with love. Yeah, good one. Uh, fun fact: I have a cat named Colby. Yeah. That what? <laughs> I just have a cat named Colby. Oh, do you? My name okay. is Max, after Maximilian Colby. Uh, uh, we're just trying to think of saint names. There's literally no like story behind or anything. I have. I'm look, looking at it right now. I. I collect prayer cards, and I have uh, do I have it over here somewhere? No, I don't. Um, but I have these ones that came with um, spirit juice. I signed up for their email list at a, at a conference I was at for fundraising, and and they were like, we'll send this to you. When they send it, they sent all these prayer cards, in, but they look like retro baseball cards. If you've been mm-hmm. in my office, they're hanging like by the computer. They're super cool. I have Mother Angelica, uh, Father Emil Capon, and then Maximilian Colby. Right next to Let's go. So that's going. Uh, I'm going a similar route with uh, being able to not like not afraid to call out uh, somebody and but also our our faith warrior because you've got to have that before you get into evangelization. So I'm going St. Catherine of Siena. Great one, great one. She's on my great. list. Yeah, and her her day, her uh, feast day was yesterday. That was great. Yeah. yeah. Talk about a bold woman, you know, a bold oh, woman. Yeah. That's why I used. To, I had another one. I want to say just in case it's on your list, but uh, there's another one that I used to always say it in the podcast. I'd say, and that'll be my faith warrior or whatever. And Lindsay told me when she got home, uh, it was oh, it's the one with Branson actually, because then her and Emily watched it together, and they said, uh, her, Lindsay told me 
was like, if you're going to pick a fake boy, you should pick St. Catherine's hand. I was like, mm. oh, I don't know much about her. And she kind of told me a little bit about her. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, she's going to be in my top five. Yeah, she's one of those where I think oftentimes um, I'm like, you know, we all talk about wanting to be around the Saints, and we are around modern day Saints, but. You yeah. know, sometimes Saints were pretty, pretty opinionated and very yeah. like super strong personalities, and she's definitely um, one of those. Um, oh, yeah. But for my for my fourth pick, I'm going to go with another one of those uh, yeah. really bold women. I'm going to go with Saint Teresa of Avila. Um, yeah, wife loves her, so got to put her in there. But also okay. um, the Spanish roots. But I mean, yeah, just just reformed yeah. a lot of things about the the Carmelites, and so can't complain. Well then, I'm gonna go next. Uh, we gotta go baptize a lot of people. I have a feeling there's a lot of people in the world not baptized, so we're gonna go St. Francis Xavier. We've got our, go. our good leadership, we've got our, our faith warrior, and now we got our our workhorse, the guy who's gonna go out. Yeah. There. We need you to baptize about another three hundred thousand people. <laughs> Crazy, Crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. You gotta have a Jesuit in there. You know, okay. you just got. You gotta have a Jesuit, and so I'll also do my Jesuit right about now. So I'm going with St. John de Brebeuf, um, North American martyr. Okay. Dude was absolutely, um, yeah, just a dog for the gospel. Just okay. went to, went to North America outside of all the suffering and all the other things and all the torturous ways in which he died. Um, he wanted to be there. He wanted to preach the gospel. And I mean, partially why we're, we're, we're Catholic here now, I would argue, you know, outside of, um, this is the same guy that like he was one that kind of evangelized to or because of what he did uh saint Kateri to pick with him like came about i remember that somebody else yeah so that's like the the okay. major the major group that that yeah, really moved but so you have like saint isaac jokes you have um yeah. uh the whole group there but yeah, saint john de Brebeuf, just um six foot just like a big man big yeah, french yeah. guy yeah. yeah that's wild and i think there was one where like these people saw him, maybe him, but where they're like, they saw how much faith he had or, or something that like they ate his heart because they were hoping that they could even get a fraction of his or his courage and faith or something. I don't know if that was him or not, or maybe I'm making something up. But Crazy. This guy, like I mean, they, yeah. he, would, he wouldn't stop praising God in the midst of being tortured. And so they finally just shoved uh, an iron rod down his throat so he would stop singing praises to God. So, um, man for that moment. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to cut to a clip that shows you those. Um, <laughs> all right. So my fifth pick, um, I would go, man, I'm, I'm, I'm torn, but I think that I would have to go into someone who would be like our prayer person and then also just like a great woman, my middle, my, my, middle, my daughter's middle name is after. So I would be St. Therese. Got to have her in there. Got to have her in there. I was so struggling with this right there because you also got like, you could throw in like a St. Thomas Aquinas who could like debate some of the major people yeah. out there. Uh, St. Augustine would be good. St. Francis would be great. Now, if you had to pick a sixth man, but it was like not, not quite a saint yet, it's a blessed, who would you pick? You know, I feel like I'll get hate if I don't, if I don't shout out the Oklahoma legend, um, yeah. Blessed Father Stanley Rother. But I'm also kind of torn yeah. with, um, Blessed Pierre Giorgio, you know, you need you need a guy. Um, I'm also a super nice guy, you know. Yeah, if you're gonna pick him as a blessing, you gotta do it soon because he's not gonna. Yeah, be yeah, yeah. Uh, blessed Stanley Rother was Bishop Condolet's first pick. It's like, wow. all right, it's great. Wow, and it wow. might be one. I always bring him up because most people don't even know about him, but it's Father Al. The mm, bless, I'm, okay. I'm almost positive it's blessed. I don't have his book up there, uh, but Father Aloysius Schwartz, and he was basically. Uh, Went to, he was very, very dedicated to, to feeding and serving the poor, all the way to the point where when he got his rectory job, or his job over in Italy, he was in South Korea after the Korean War, which is hmm. completely desolated. And he went over there and they gave him the keys to the rectory, and the rectory was super nice. He immediately sold it and moved it to like a little Malay hut. He's like, I can't serve the poor if I'm going to be living in something like this. And yeah, he just really dedicated his life. But now he's, or since then, he's built. Girls Towns and Boys Towns all through South Korea, then went to, uh, I don't remember the exact word, but Philippines, India, and Mexico was one of the last ones he did in like the 80s, I think. Wow. Uh, Our Lady of Beno, he had this dedication to her, a lady of the poor. But um, yeah, he 
he, in a dream after he told Mexico, like, I am ALS, I'm in a wheelchair, I can't do another Girl Scout Boy Scout, I don't even know how much longer I have to live. Um, Our Lady of Bonneau appeared to him in a dream, and as she approached him, the stars have, like came about, and she actually transformed into Our Lady of Guadalupe and told him to do it. Wow. So he woke up the next day and said, we're, we're going to do it. Like, Our Lady of, of Guadalupe appeared to me, we're going to do it. And they're like, oh my gosh. So wow. I think actually focus is going on a mission trip down there where, where they're at. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. I've known those stories. Priests, Priests and Beggars is the name of the book. It's such okay. an easy read. It's so good. Uh, yeah. Well, awesome. Well, yeah, Ignacio, thanks for having me on. I'm sure I will see you around the, the parish real soon. And everyone, yeah. again, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. We will all see you guys next week. We will have Audrey Stubblefield on, who is uh, works at the Chancery here in the Diocese of Tulsa. We'll be talking everything from engaged encounter all the way through marriage and uh, talking about kind of a little bit more in her role. But other than that, we'll see you guys next week.